let's start. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm Debbie Perez, and with me is uh, Samuel Campos, that uh, is our solution specialist. Um, I apologize because Ruben uh, cannot attend today uh, for personal issues uh, or reasons. So uh, we are only Samuel and I to to lead this session. Uh, we are um, a Spanish partner called Avantic. We are focused on development on, on Oracle solutions, mostly Java or, or Oracle solutions. And we are um, uh, we are doing this session uh, like a, an approach to, to headless content, to design headless content, uh, without thinking in any technical CMS uh, at the back end. So let's um, let's just start with some uh, basic topics or basic concepts. I understand that everybody here already knows of all of them, but uh, we want to to refresh your memory with with them. Uh, let's start about content or, or structured content. Um, a content uh, is a term used to describe uh, some content that exists separate from any file or, or layout. So uh, we use structured content to group all the information on, on different content types. And, and these types uh, can be exclusive for a department or maybe used by, by all the company. I mean, you can uh, design uh, or think in some uh, content types that are exclusive or for maybe one group of pers of uh, people or employees or whatever. But there are other contents that are more wide used and, and maybe are used by all the company and also for integration with other companies, for example. Um, and in a content, uh, you have to think to include to include all the um, possible use that the, that content ne needs, uh, without thinking on the channel or the the, the final front end for for that content. Uh, in in this case that we have, for example, here uh, a user profile content, uh, you can think in, in that user profile to be used in in a in our company intranet, or maybe uh, you want to use it in a employees directory only showing. The, the picture or the name of the employee, or it can be used by by the financials department to obtain your address to send you the, the some information, or maybe you can use that user profile for your identity management tool at, at your company. So thinking in one content to, to get used by, by any kind of application, by any kind of uh, real use case. So. Uh, you have to think in or, or keep in mind always that you need a unique content for each concept. So you start with content um, or the structured content, and you mm, to define this the the relationship between the, these those uh, these content types or unique content modeling. So a content model defines how your content will be uh, broke up in, into common or, or, or separate elements. So the, the responsibility for creating content models uh, usually is uh, the, uh, delivered to 10 uh, administrators or content administrators or developers. And But every content creator should, uh, should at least uh, to be aware or to be conscious of uh, which elements are uh, under that content. So uh, how do you the, um, separate all the different fields of that content so they can imagine what is at the back of at, at at that file. Uh, with a well-defined content model, you can reuse your, your content across different channels, platforms, and, and systems. So the reuse is the key. Uh, you will save a lot of effort, money, and and a lot of time that is very important for in, in our organization. And a content models uh, uh, con contains uh, detailed definitions of each content type. So you, for example, uh, can uh, mix or, or group content, uh, create a new content type with another 
content types that are included in the same in the same in the big one. So you you always reuse those content types, or, and also you link them. So it's uh, you have to think in, in your content model as something like, for example, your database. So you you have to think that it will be used widely, by, by any other application or any other system. Um, so we we have the content, we have the content model, and finally we have our meta metadata and taxonomies. Metadata is uh, well is, is the information attached to the to that content, so that is structured content, and we have different kinds of, of metadata. We have a structural metadata that defines uh, elements that, that need uh, are need to be collected, like title, uh, labels, author, creation date, uh, the subject of the purpose of that content is, is very common this in, in document models uh, or document management tools. Uh, also you have administrative metadata that is uh, created by the system normally and, and also you need to that information to trace the, the use of that content. For example, um, when you need to to know who who creates the content, who modifies the content, when, from where, and all this information that is um, related to the system, but also related to the content. And of course, you have uh, descriptive metadata that is any kind of information that you want to add to that content, so you can later search about that descriptive metadata. Also, we have uh, taxonomies. And they are like uh, collections of metadata that allows you to uh, organize your content or, or your content model. You have different kinds of taxonomies. For example, uh, it's very common to have a, a term list that is uh, a list of terms to, that you can um, uh, add to, to, to some contents. For, for example, if you, the, the common, uh, an example can be the language. You have different language for each content, or maybe you have different um, departments, and you can you you pick up from from a term list. Also, we have hierarchies, so uh, often called taxonomy, and a hierarchy defines the structural framework used to class classify the terms into parent-child or uh, and broad to narrow relate relationships. So hierarchies are uh, used to, to support uh, groups of information and not simply, uh, not just creating grouping. So it's organ organizational grouping. So it's very common to have, for example, your organization uh, structure as a taxonomy or maybe your uh, document model, uh, different kind of, of content types in, in separate labels. And this is, can be also a taxonomy. And finally, we have the, the thesauri that uh, translates uh, conceptual re relationships between the content of the main naturally by humans into something a computer can understand. So thesauri typically address three types of relationships, equivalent, hierarchical, and associative related terms. Um, finally, let's focus on channels. So, um, one of the main elements in, in Headless CMS are, are delivery channels. So, uh, with uh, the, that channel is the final destination or, or the final uh, application of that content. So, the common use is we can use a, a web page or mobile or application. Uh, um, that are most the most famous use cases, but also we now are we are starting to use the, the same content in uh, virtual reality or augmented reality applications, or also in in digital assistants or or, or voice uh, systems. When we are talking uh, about headless CMS, uh, uh, that system provides all the capabilities of a standard CMS, the backend but only uh, taking care of just the information and the content. It's not taking care or, or responsibility of the front end of that uh, information. So the, 
the content is always pushed by a RESTful API. So you can uh, send all the information of your contents to any system with a standard RESTful API. And uh, that allows uh, to connect your CMS with any other system that can be a web page, a mobile application, a Google, Alec a Google Assistant, Alexa, or any other system. So uh, keep in mind that in a headless CMS, we don't uh, generate any front code, any front end code. So all the information is, is uh, just for the contents on the API. And these kind of headless semi systems are also referred as content as a service because it's only taking care of the content. So uh, it can uh, allow you as a designer or developer to, to think more, more in the information and not in, in, the, in the front end or, or the application or, or layout in it. Let's go ahead with headless. As, as David said earlier, uh, headless CMS is a system that takes care of our content, but not of the way it is presented. Uh, it only takes care of the attributes, the metadata, the taxonomy, the relationship that those contents have, have within uh, our system. But the main issue when we are uh, working with this kind of, of, of tools it, uh, is that we are used to, to work with other kind of CMS uh, that we now call uh, the classic content management systems. Uh, these classic content management systems is usually have a, um, a tool or, or a module that enable us to create uh, web pages or a final delivery system for our content. Uh, it could be via a web page or a news feed or a mail delivery service. Uh, but now we here in in headless CMS, the main focus of the of the of these uh, tools is to take care only of the content and leave the rest of the development of front end to other tools that are most uh, or are more uh, um, specialized in the in those kinds of of work. Uh, Maybe this can help us uh, understand better. Uh, this is a nearless, uh, nearly headless because this, uh, we can see that the head is the delivery channel. Uh, the final destination of our content, the way our content will be presented or will be utilized. And here we have the backend uh, headless CMS that only understands about content. It doesn't understand about JavaScript. It doesn't understand about HTML. It doesn't understand about uh, JSON. It only understands about content and the way it is stored and the relationship the contents have with it, with it, uh, within it and each other. Uh, and the only way these two elements connect is with the JSON, uh, I'm sorry, with the REST API that usually uh, uses JSON or, or XML. But uh, this is a, a kind of uh, weird, weird way to look at it, but it, it, it works for me. Um, a headless uh, CMS uh, works obviously with headless content. Uh, as I said previously, headless content doesn't understand anything about HTML, doesn't understand anything about J JavaScript or layouts or way it is going to be presented. It only understands about the data, the information that is going to be stored within the uh, content management system. In headless CMS, uh, what matters is not um, also uh, the final destination of the content. Uh, because uh, not the way it's going to be presented on that front end, but the information that is going to be presented on that front end. Uh, for example, uh, within an HTML or, or a classic implementation of CMS, we usually tend to look first at the layout of the content or, or, or the design of the web page and from that build up on that the different kind of contents and the content model that is going to be implemented in that uh, web page. Uh, here things must change a bit because um, we are not talking only now about web pages or mobile applications. We are talking about any kind of different digital experiences that are currently available in internet. If you think about your day-to-day your -day life, uh, you see that not 
you are not in front of a screen all the time. You constantly are using services from the internet that present to you not only by a, a screen, but uh, within Alexa that it's talking to you within a GPS and you can, it's a screen, but it's not a computer. It's not something you that can interact with it with a mouse. Uh, also, you have other kind of uh, digital experiences within web pages because not only in web pages are, are shown uh, articles or products or HTML pages, but also uh, interactivity with other tools like uh, enterprise uh, digital assistants or uh, news feeds or mail delivery servers that you can interact with them, but not in the same way that, as you interact with a common HTML page. So uh, the main focus of uh, this obvious of this presentation is to take a look back of how are we uh, designing these content models currently in, in our world that is uh, step, uh, taking a step forward from a classic CMS to the now uh, most efficient headless CMS. The first step that we have to do in order to leave behind or, or not leave behind, in order to improve uh, the way we use headless CMS is to stop just layouting. As I said previously, the common way we are used to interact with this kind of projects in which we have to implement a new uh, digital experience for a customer is that the customer brings us uh, a design, an HTML design, uh, and from that we start to build content. This, this is still this still can be done, but it's not uh, the best way we want to do it when we are facing not just an on-screen uh, digital experience, when we have multiple digital experiences across the, our organization of, of of the client or or the client organization, we have to focus more on the channels that the, our content is going to be presented and less about the layouting of the, of the content. Uh, how we do that? Uh, the, the first uh, step that mainly is going to be necessary to do is to inspect your content. Depending on the delivery channels, we can determine the characteristics of the content model. Uh, as I said, uh, we are used to to think only on about on screen uh, deployments or on screen experiences like web applications, mobile applications. But nowadays, uh, as we are facing new digital experiences, we can uh, we can assume that our content will be implemented on different digital experiences. Obviously, it, uh, it is most commonly that uh, the user, the, 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 the client itself is going to, it's going to um, clarify to us which digital experiences are going to be available on, on their marketing strategy or their public relations uh, strategy. Uh, for example, uh, we have um, build a, a, a strategy based on these four uh, on these four channels or, or these four main channels that we assume are the most commonly used nowadays uh, as i said the the most common or the 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 one that is most used currently or or was mo the most used in, in on classic content management systems is the on screen delivery this on screen delivery uh, includes web applications, mobile applications, uh, mail delivery servers, news feeds. But other experiences are available nowadays also, like VR, virtual reality, or augmented reality delivery. Uh, we are going to uh, watch more on detail all these uh, deliveries on, on, on the subsequent uh, slides. Uh, other one is the conversation delivery, the one that we have with digital assistants and voice delivery, the, the ones that are mostly uh, available to us in the form of a uh, speech, not uh, only human speech, but also machine speech. As we know nowadays, it's common that you ask something to Alexa, you ask something to Google Now, you ask something to Siri, 
and th these digital experiences talk to you directly. You don't have to uh, be in front of the screen to interact with these digital experiences. So if you think about it, everything that comes out of Alexa, everything that comes out in your GPS, everything that comes out in a virtual reality environment, everything that comes out on your web application, it's content. It's elements of information that someone had to fulfill somewhere in order to be available, available for you to, to watch or to experience or to listen. So uh, the, the way these contents are uh, treated or the way these contents are uh, contributed uh, is the main focus of, of, of headless content, uh, content management service. Because you can now assume that your information that you are currently contributing on your uh, system, it's gonna be available not, not only in what digital experience, but in many digital experiences at the same time. So one of the uh, other of the focuses of this presentation is uh, to watch how these digital experiences or, or these delivery systems are going to interact with each other and how we can uh, design a content model that will fit more easily on those digital experiences. Uh, the first uh, digital experience or the first um, content delivery that we have here is the on-screen delivery. It's obviously text-based. Uh, everything uh, you uh, contribute, it's gonna be mainly text. Uh, obviously you can, uh, put also different type of viewable, viewable media, like videos or images, but the main focus of the information is gonna be text. Uh, it involves classic layouting. Uh, I mean, for classic that uh, it's gonna be presented by HTML, with JavaScript, with uh, CSS, tools that are already well known. Uh, these content attributes, uh, the content attributes that are going to form this content are mainly going to be like title, description, text, and as I said, optional media like images and videos. For example, of these on-screen deliveries are, as I said, web pages, made to leave the system, news feeds, mobile applications, etc. The other kind of uh, digital experience or delivery system or channel, as I uh, as you as you can assume, this is going to be, is uh, virtual reality or augmented reality delivery. These experiences are based on experience of the user experience or the user viewpoint. Uh, for example, uh, this this is an example that is uh, very easy for me to to explain. So uh, I'm going to use it a lot uh, on the on the next slides. But one of these uh, examples is uh, imagine a museum that you enter a museum that has the capability to, to interact with it with, augmented with an augmented reality application. Uh, based on your standpoint of view or the location you are within the museum, it's going to be the contents that are available to you. Now, I, for example, you are in, standing in front of, of a picture or in front of a, a sculpture and the information that it's gonna be available to you is gonna be about that sculpture, about that, that picture. So these elements or this data about GPS location, about uh, uh, things around you, about your environment, could be also stored as information within the digital, within the content and experience. Uh, I'm sorry, within the content management server. Uh, this data uh, can be presented within the virtual reality and the augmented reality as images, as text globes, or as GPS metadata. As I, as I said, uh, one of the main uh, goals of virtual reality or augmented reality is to enhance the, the perception, enhance the experience that the user currently is having in, with his or her environment and this uh, environment is going to it's going to add more value to the content by adding it 
information that it's going to be needed in order to retrieve it from the content management server. Uh, for examples of these uh, um, deliveries are Oculus Rift, Google Cardboard, or, or HoloLens, or even PlayStation VR. Uh, we, we, we should remind here that, as I said, every, every text, every image, every so, uh, sound that we are listening and, and some kind of digital experience comes from a content management element. It really can be a content management server, headless or not. What, what, what we, one thing that we have to take in, in account is uh, that even PlayStation VR or HoloLens or Google Cardboard can be connected with this content management, with these headless content management servers because they are agnostic. They don't know the technology they are built, the other elements are built on. They don't know if Oculus Rift is written in C, they don't know if HoloLens is written in Java, they don't know if, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm giving examples. Uh, the, the, the thing that they are available but via a REST API that is agnostic, that is uh, common to any kind of technology is one of the main elements that we should uh, uh, take uh, in advantage from. Taking uh, ahead, uh, other uh, experience, other delivery channel will be conversations. Conversations, uh, the difference between with, the, with conversations and common HTML or common text experiences are that the common text experiences are written, uh, how can I say, uh, not taking care of the of the the person that is watching or the, that is reading the information. The information is there, only there. With conversation delivery, you have to take account in that it has to be uh, suitable for a human speech coherent conversation. Uh, for example. Imagine that you ask Siri, Siri, uh, how can I make a reservation in this restaurant? Uh, Siri is not, or Siri should not give you a whole reading of the web page, that uh, of, of the web page that is the reservations page of the restaurant. It should give you only the basic or or the most appropriate information for your question. It should ask, uh, it should answer. You have to. Uh, uh, visit this web page uh, and do the reservation, or, or you have to call this number and, and give you that number, and I'll give you a whole article about what a reservation is. So this is very, uh, this is the main focus or, or, or the main characteristic of the conversation delivery. Uh, because of these content attributes, the depend on key concepts that are relevant to a conversation. These key concepts could be stored with the content, uh, within the content as metadata. Uh, as, as David said earlier, metadata is uh, information attached to the content, but it's information that allows us to search it, to find it, to, to organize it better. Uh, these key concepts, uh, are the way we, we can access content more easily afterwards. For example, uh, when you ask Siri a question of how can I make a reservation in this restaurant, Siri doesn't make a Google search with, with that question in, in place. It takes the main ideas from your, from your question, the key concepts of your question, and based on those key concepts, makes a search based upon uh, the weight of each concept. This uh, allows the content management server to uh, br to bring about or, or to respond with the appropriate content that we are searching for. Uh, this uh, information can also bring links to detailed information. For, as I said, uh, the re the response from the from the content management server could be. A, a, a content that content could be uh, linked to a more specific uh, article or more specific web page, uh, as, as I said as an example. How can I make a reservation uh, to this restaurant? 
and the uh, and the answer will be uh, you have to enter this website to make that reservation and bring you back the link to the restaurant's reservation page. Examples of this uh, conversation-based deliveries are, for example, Oracle Digital Assistant, Google Assistant, or Amazon, Amazon Lex. And the final uh, uh, delivery that, that we can uh, view within here uh, is the human speech coherent speech. It could be, uh, uh, com it can be confusing to, between this one and the conversation, but the main focus here is that it, it is not uh, based upon text, it is based upon speech. It could be written speech by a machine or a voice recorded or recorded voice. It is, as the previous one, based on key concept. But the main difference between this and the other one and, and the conversation based is that it's voice uh, based, is upon sound. Examples for this are Siri, Alexa, and Google Now. Now, uh, the main feature here is designing headless content. We have to go from bottom to top. When designing headless content, it is better to start thinking about the attributes that are going to com uh, compose our content. As uh, we saw in previous slides, we saw how these attributes will be in every one, in, in each of our uh, deliveries, in each of the deliveries that we are proposing. Uh, as I said, the content, the content attributes must suit the content delivery channels. Previously, in 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 traditional uh, content experience, I'm sorry, in, in traditional uh, content management systems, in, in uh, we are, were focused on layouting. Now we must focus on the delivery channel that our content is going to leave or it's going to be at the end of of, of the application. Uh, content attributes uh, could be of, uh, as we see, uh, as we propose with this methodology, is that these content attributes can be of these five types. They can be text, they can be visual media, like images and videos, they can be listening media, like podcasts, music, music and recorded voice, they can be GPS metadata, or they can be web-based data, web-based information, like HTML pages and links to HTML pages. And I, as you can see uh, here on, on, the, uh, lower on the lower right corner, we have this uh, diagram that has these four uh, channels, these four delivery channels that is on screen, VR, conversation, and voice. And we are going to see upon them how uh, these attrib content attributes uh, enter within each of these experiences. The first one that we had was text. Text is present on every one of these uh, experiences, on every one of these uh, channels, because on screen is the text that we read. In virtual reality is the text that pops up of a an, uh, an sculpture that says which is he, uh, the author of that uh, sculpture. In a conversation is the text that we read that the, that the digital assistant a response to us in the conversation. And in voice, it can be the text that is written by a, an application that is capable of reading text. The next one is going to be viewable media. How viewable media suits these uh, channels is that it's present on on screen deliveries, on virtual reality on, or augmented reality deliveries. For example, uh, uh, we can, uh, we can be Again, the example of the museum. Uh, we can be at the museum and we can uh, see the an, an, a picture of certain of certain author, and we want to know more about the author. So it can pop up an image, or uh, a, a, a portrait of, of the author of that of that picture. In conversation, it could uh, it could help the conversation to give examples. For example, uh, you, uh, you can ask a digital assistant. Uh, where does uh, my next uh, appointment is? 
it is at the restaurant uh, called uh, and the name of the restaurant and also bring you a picture of the restaurant the next one is web-based content that is obviously on screen uh, because in, in web applications in mobile applications is the the most common used uh, content that we are that we see but it also can be applied in conversations uh, the conversation, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the, within the conversation, the content management server can uh, respond you with a link to a page with an extract from the page. So that's why it's also in the conversation uh, delivery. GPS is most commonly used on virtual reality or augmented reality because it's uh, data that allows the experience to be connected with the content. And listening media, it also can be uh, in a virtual reality or augmented reality experience or in a voice uh, experience, of course. In the virtual reality example of the museum, again, it can bring us a, 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 a speech-based description of a sculpture, a, a, of a, a picture. So for example, imagine that it's a museum that a blind person, blind people can visit so in order to describe the picture the sculptures it can be made using listening media listening uh, voice recorded descriptions of the of the of the pictures and the sculptures so how how these attributes uh, interact with each other uh, text based uh, content attributes when they are on all channels it may it must include attributes short and concise because uh, imagine in a virtual reality or an augmented reality uh, uh, experience it will be difficult and it will be no not such comfortable to see a big pile of text appearing in front of you uh, the 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 main idea of the virtual reality is to enhance the experience, not to make you read a whole pile of, of, of text. So it must be concise. Uh, this is because as we have the, the text in, uh, in all channels, uh, what I say here is that imagine you have a project that in which you have to uh, expose content in all different channels, in all four channels that we uh, discussed here earlier. This is why you have to take in account that, that your Text content must be short and concise and cannot depend on visual highlighting. Uh, why that can it cannot be depending on visual highlighting? Because if you take in account the uh, voice delivery, the voice experience, how do you read a bold uh, font? How do you read uh, an uppercase word? It can be done. So in order to achieve uh, the whole uh, four channel delivery you have to take into account every each one of the delivery channels you are currently uh, in your project or in your uh, content management system instead if you have only on screen virtual reality and conversation but not listening you could use visual highlighting but if only you are using on-screen delivery, you can go crazy. You can do anything you want. Obviously, uh, taking into account uh, the design patterns that are most commonly used nowadays and all that. How uh, viewable and listening media should be in, uh, in, in experiences that are on-screen, virtual reality, and conversations. Uh, this is, is a key point. Media should assist text, not just depend on it. For example, if you have, uh, again, the example of the museum, you have a, a, a picture or, or a sculpture and you, uh, you want to give a brief uh, explanation or a brief description of the, of this, of the sculpture, you shouldn't read the whole Wikipedia page about the sculpture. In that in that uh, listening media, you you must do only uh, include the basics or, or, or the most important information about that element. 
And if you have a uh, on screen delivery, you can go crazy, but maybe this uh, also can apply for, for on screen uh, ex deliveries that if you want to assist your content, you want to improve the experience of your content, you must not abuse using videos or, or listening media. I remember uh, back in the day and uh, on the early 2000s when the web of the flash based web pages were common that it all was animated. It all had sounds. It was very, very disturbing. It was very, very uh, uh, distracting from the main focus of the page. So if you want to deliver content that is uh, not just uh, correct, but that can capture the, uh, the attention of the, of the viewer, of the consumer, of the client, you, you must take this uh, also into consideration. And last but not least, uh, the web-based content. Uh, it can be used on screen and conversation, but the web content may bring the user a detailed view of the content information, like full articles, news, product info, but not, it cannot be the only content that is displayed to the user. Uh, in the example of the, of the chatbot or, or the digital assistant in, in which you ask it, it uh, how can I make a reservation in this restaurant, it should not bring you the whole uh, web page of the of the restaurant it should j just bring you the detailed information the the, the backbone information of uh, you have to visit this web page to make the reservation and it has to be the user intends to click on that page and view that page not just slap it in the face with with the content and and the html and uh, how can we up uh, uh, use taxonomy and metadata in headless CMS. It can be barely done almost the same way as it has been used for about every other content management server. But the most critical aspect of the taxonomy and the metadata is the relationships that they can build together to be uh, grouped into uh, more specific uh, groups of content. For example, you can base these groups on channels. If you have a, a content management server that it's, is uh, serving content to all kinds of digital experiences, you will have such a mess or a mismatch of content. Here will, you will have a voice a recorder, you will have here uh, an HTML, you have here uh, text-based uh, information. So, so in order to organize that, you can use the metadata, use the, the taxonomies, to approach um, sorting your content based upon the channel. For example, you can have four channels based on the four digital experiences or the four delivery channels that we proposed. And upon them, you can have sorted the, the, the contents that you are currently contributing on your content management server. Uh, as of the presentation, I think it's all. Uh, I don't know what. Yeah, uh, we have four minutes left, uh, Samuel. Maybe uh, we can show you a real use case that we have done the last year with um, with uh, a, a customer called Affinity. Can you log in in the Natural Trainer or Ultima website? Sure. So as, as I mentioned before, uh, Avantic is, is a company focused on Oracle solutions. We are experts on Oracle content and experience, uh, CMS. And this, uh, this website was the, the first one that we did last year with this new CMS and in a headless way. Uh, all the content are stored in, in the Oracle CMS but the front end is Salesforce uh, Commerce Cloud, for in this case, because they, they wanted an, an e-commerce solution. And so all the information of the of the of each content is uh, integrated via REST API with the Salesforce solution, and all this content that are you uh, viewing here is exported and presented directly in the in the e-commerce uh, solution or e-commerce CMS. Now they they want to 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 switch and use this 
contents also in blog posts, uh, digital assistant solutions, maybe customer customer care portal. So they are starting a, a new headless uh, uh, approach, approach. Yeah, uh, to to all the new web pages that they are creating. For example, here you have here the banners that are stored here in digital uh, and Oracle Content Experience. These banners are contributed here in Content and Experience, but then are used within the Ultima site within Salesforce. And Salesforce is the one that uses its own layouting system, its own layouting model to present our contents, to present the contents that are stored in, in Oracle Content and Experience. So in this way, uh, we only had in this project one delivery channel that was on screen delivery. So uh, it is just a web page, but we wanted to uh, do it headless. So whenever affinity in this case, that is now uh, tending to approach with different uh, or other different uh, experiences, it can be done. It, it, it can be done and not by uh, modifying the content, but only implementing this this same contents in other experiences mm -hmm. also we we use here basic concepts I mentioned that before we're using taxonomies that is the web page hierarchy is, is based on taxonomies and uh, channels uh, Samuel uh, mentioned that we have one channel for each web web page or, or, or country web page for example Ultima has uh, eight different countries and each country can can have inside different translations. So for example, I can create an English translation of an article that can be used in the global website and also in the American website or UK based website. So the the, the idea is that only uh, and the, the, the agencies that we are working with it that uh, elaborates all the news content are using all just the CMS. They are Aware, they are not aware about Salesforce e-commerce platform. They are not aware about how is the, the content pushed to the front end. They just in, uh, create the new content in, in the Oracle platform and it automatically sends to the different web pages or are published to the different web pages. So we just finish in time, I think, but we don't have, we, we didn't leave any minutes to, to questions and, and as well from people. Actually, I can help uh, close this up. So we did, we, we have a few minutes. Um, first, I want to say thank you for speaking. And uh, to remind everybody that we have two amazing gold sponsors, Srijan and Tharzan, waiting to show you the amazing things they are working on. Uh, their sessions will happen at 1215 during lunchtime. Um, so you can go check those out. And of course, check out the next sessions. But I, we do have one question that was posed by Howard Taylor. Um, the question is, what's a text globe? This was about 17 minutes ago. Ah, text globe in a, in a virtual reality and augmented reality is just like a comic book in which a, a text globe appears. Imagine that um, you see an Again, the, the example of the museum, you see an interesting uh, sculpture and it pops up a, a text globe that said, this sculpture, did you know that this sculpture was made in 1492 by da, da, da. It could be some kind of, of text globe. So you mean like, like, like text balloon? A text balloon. Okay. okay. Mm, it, it's a way to, to, to show text values, text content in a virtual reality or an augmented reality experience. And then there was a side, not quite a question, but a quick side chat that I think maybe folks were looking for clarification about viewable me media could be labeled with alt attributes um, to describe it with text or voice and accessibility. Um, and then David followed up that it, it could be used. I didn't know if you wanted to expand on that at all. Yeah, I, I agree with, with Ralph uh, because uh, if you have an, uh, a text that describes that image, uh, for, for example, for accessibility, accessibility reasons. Um, of course, you can use in your voice channels that descriptions to, to, to describe the image to, to the people. So I agree that maybe that uh, viewable media can be added to the channel of voice. And I think it's, it fits 
as animation. Perfect. Thanks. It looks like that's all we have for questions. So thank you again for speaking at Decoupled Days.